Thanks, Greg. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, folks who are visiting with family and stuff uh, here to Emmanuel with us today. And uh, today's a special day because we get to uh, have communion together. And uh, normally we do that on the first uh, Sunday of the month, but uh, we've switched it over here to this Sunday, and it's, it's a great time. It's really appropriate for us to do that on, on Thanksgiving weekend because uh, communion really is our opportunity as a body of Christ to remember the amazing things that God has done for us. And, uh, but you know what? Sometimes it's, it's hard to remember those things because there's so many other bizarre and strange and worrisome things going on in the world. Steve, go ahead and give me that, that next slide. And, you know, if you think about our, our country right now, there's just a lot of unrest, right? There's the whole COVID thing that we've been struggling with for the last two years and just heard there's a new uh, variant coming out of uh, South Africa and everybody's worried about what that's going to be doing and it just seems like it's never ending, right? And we've had the whole uh, political turmoil and racial stuff going on and uh, uh, the whole thing about uh, vaxxing or not vaxxing or masking or not masking and, and uh, it's, it's taken a lot of folks and, and I don't know, maybe that came into your Thanksgiving meal with your family and stuff and there was a lot of stress there over some of these things as well too that didn't necessarily pop up in the past as well. Uh, so uh, here we are to have a morning to be thankful for the things that God has done in a nation that seems like it has about as much unrest as it's ever had, right? And then there was yesterday. Go ahead and give me that next slide, Steve, right? There we go. Yes, in the midst of everything else. That's right. Yes, there was... 42 to 27. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. You're not a Buckeye. But if you're a Buckeye, you know what that was. So the, I tell you one thing I am glad for is, is that Steve Ruffner is not here today. He's, he's actually in Michigan enjoying. I think this is, they're, they're putting the same score up at churches in Michigan. It's actually a time of praise and thanksgiving today up there, but it's, it's not here. But the one thing I would tell Steve is, you know, to have a rivalry, you actually need to have a rival. So there's been a whole generation of kids have grown up never knowing that Michigan could beat you. So now we know it can happen and we can have a rivalry again. But those, so some, I'm sure for some folks, Greg was saying, why are we so somber and stuff? It's now we know why, Greg. It's a, it's a somber weekend, Greg. Yeah. Go ahead, give me that next slide. But you know what? We laugh about that a little bit, but worry worry wears us down and it weighs us down and it just wears at us and uh and when that happens your eyes drop down right and it's it's hard to look up and see god when you got all this stuff weighing you down right do you know this is actually a verse from scripture worry weighs a person down god understands that he's not He's not telling you, don't worry, be happy, right? Because he says, yeah, I know that worry weighs you down. So isn't it good that we, we have a God who understands what's going on with us? But thank God that's not the end of the verse. So give me the rest of that, Steve. It says, worry weighs a person down, but an encouraging word cheers a person up. Yeah. So thank God there are there are encouraging words to cheer us up. Now, for some of you, this, this isn't just a time of worry. This is a time of grieving. Some of you went to your Thanksgiving tables and there are empty seats for folks that have been there for many times in the past and they're not, right? And remember what Solomon said, this is a, there's a time to mourn and weep and there's a time to rejoice. And so for some of you, this is a time to mourn right now. Uh, and I'm not trying to, to, to tell you you shouldn't be doing that, but what I'm also saying, though, is that if you're just burdened with worry, I want to give you some hope and some things that as we get ready to come to communion, maybe you can remember these things, and as you're taking communion, you can say, yes, God, <laughs> here, here are some amazing things that in the midst of all this COVID stuff and the political stuff and the economic stuff, and the social unrest stuff, God is constant. And these are things that are still mine. Possessions you've given me that none of those things can ever take away. Because they're my possessions in Christ. 
These are the things that God has given me. So I want us to, I thought we'd go back and take a look now that we're finishing up our series in Ephesians and reflect through Ephesians some of the amazing things that God has done with it. We studied about. And so I picked out uh, 15 of them. We should be done around one o'clock. No, it won't take that long. Watch the clocks when it gets to be 11. Just say, well, stop. It's over. Okay. So, but I, I just wanted us to reflect a little bit about, we've been through this amazing series on the book of Ephesians. And in Ephesians, it, it just is so rich in the amazing things that God has done for us. We just need to step back today and be in awe of that. And I would just want us to reflect through this. This isn't an exhaustive list. You go through your own uh, list of Ephesians, you'll probably find four or five other things or eight, or nine, ten other things too. I just picked out the, the top 15 that sort of hit me. So let's get started. Go ahead, Steve. And, and I'm hoping as we go through this that, that this verse can resonate with us as well because remember what David said. He says, why am I discouraged? Why is my... Because you know what he's saying is, I am discouraged. My heart is sad. This is what the psalmist was writing. When he started this psalm, he says, I'm hurting. And I don't have any hope. And he's looking around saying, why is this? Why do I have to feel this way? But you know what he said? He said, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Because the psalmist was saying, I remember the things and that's why I love all the Psalms of King David. Because every one, it starts off with, God, why am I persecuted? Why am I struggling? Why do all the wicked seem to be doing so well and the righteous doing so poorly? And, and he, he's just straight up with God. He's honest with him. But, but you know, by the end of every one of those Psalms, he's praising God because he remembers the great things. Just like Greg brought us through all those amazing things that God had done with the nation of Israel as a precursor for our salvation, right? To remember those things. So I want us to remember some of the things. And those of you who are our guests, you just get to look at little glimpses of some of the things we've been studying in the book of Ephesians. Let's go ahead and look at the first one. So here's some encouraging words from Ephesians. Go ahead, Steve. The first one is, I want you to own this for yourself. I, who was the I there? If you're part of God's family, that's you, okay? That's not somebody else sitting around you, that's you. I was chosen by God before the creation of the world. Now, first thing, the first thing you need to know is that the world was actually created, right? I, I know science is working really hard on this to try and figure all this out. So here's the end of the story. God actually created the world, right? Got it done. But you know what? A lot of times we think that's sort of a distant thing in the past that had nothing to do with us. And you know, God said before he started creation, he knew us. And he chose us to be part of his family before he started down that whole path. And the reality is creation is only here to reveal the God to us who chose us before he even started creation. That's the only purpose of creation. So, so, science is working so hard to find some other life in the universe. You know, I, I joke with my buddies at NASA because 80% of the budget's like, we've got to find life out there. And you, know, you just tell them, oh, go out at night when the stars are out and say, you know, the heavens declare what? What is it? The glory of God. You know, get, let, let's spend that money on something else because it's already there. there. Yes, there is life in the universe. It's called God, right? <laughs> he already exists. And he chose us before the beginning of creation, right? Let's keep going. He says, I am redeemed from the kingdom of Satan by the precious blood of Christ. Because everybody in this room didn't start off as a neutral person, right? It says that we belong to the ruler of the kingdom of the air. All of us, Everybody here was distant and far and separated from God and under his wrath. And not just as an as a entity that's a neutral entity out there. We actually existed in another kingdom, in Satan's kingdom. And we were enslaved to the most tyrannical 
hateful, spiteful being that exists in the universe. And we were at his whim. And God says, I redeemed you from that kingdom. When you think, you think life is hard now, we have no idea what life means to be in this kingdom for all of eternity. To be despised by God and rejected by him. And that that is the only place for us to be for all of eternity. And it cost God the most precious thing he had was the blood of his son on the cross to steal us out, to steal us away from a king who hated us to the king who loves us. That's not all. Let's keep going. My sins are forgiven. I am holy and blameless in his sight. And God just didn't pull us out of Satan's kingdom and set us aside and say, you're pretty gross, but okay, I saved you, but please don't hang around me. No, he says, I've forgiven all your sins. Today, this morning, we had a chance to confess. Just, just, and God says, if we confess our sins, he is holy and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And a lot of us got to experience some of that cleansing today. Amen? Amen. Because he can now forgive us because the payment through Christ has been made. And and we're not just sort of okay. He says when he sees us, he sees us through the blood of Christ and we are holy and blameless in his sight. Now there's a lot of times I don't feel holy and blameless. And sometimes I look at you guys and I, I don't see holy and blameless, okay? Thank God when God sees me. He sees holy and blameless because that's who he's declared me to be. And when he sees you, if you are part of his family and accepted that payment, he sees you as holy and blameless as well too. And Satan is always out there to remind you of all of your failures and all of the things you've done wrong. And he's desperate to make you feel like you have to earn God's favor and there's nothing to earn because the blood of Christ has already done it all. That is our position. Nothing can ever take that away from you. That's not it all either. Let's keep going. He says, I am now adopted by God as his child, and I am now a member of his family. There's there's no foster kids in God's family where you stay for a little while and then you, you bop around, right? There's no stepchildren where you sort of feel like you're the fifth wheel. God says, you are now my natural born children. And he says, everything I have is yours. (laughs) Because as my child, it's your inheritance. And he says, not only that, he says, I gave you a family to be with that you never had in the past. I I was with one of the guys over at the shelter Monday night, Joe, hanging out with him. And he was just despairing. Uh, somebody, he had a relationship, had walked away from him. He says, I have nothing. He says, I have nothing. That is all that I had. And, I said, and, and Joe's a believer. I said, Joe, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Okay? Because your Savior <laughs> was not dependent upon that person as to whether your Savior accepted you. And the body of Christ that you have, your brothers and sisters and fathers and sons and daughters and cousins and nephews and uncles and aunts and all those things is there it's just you're ignoring it you have all these riches in christ and you know what but as i was telling that to joe i said you know i ignore it a lot of times i get discouraged about things i get upset because i forget about it and you do as well and that's why we need to remember this right let's keep going wow what does that say uh, I'll have to tell you. <laughs> the words are in white in the bottom. Uh, <laughs> but they're there. <laughs> it says, God has blessed us in the heavenly realms with all spiritual blessings. How many spiritual blessings did he bless us with? What, what does all mean? All means all, right? Are, are you ready for this? 
There is no point in your walk with God that he's going to give you more spiritual blessings than you already have. Because at the instant you came to Christ, the instant you became part of his family, he says, I am giving you all. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I don't know any other relationship where you, where you enter into the relationship and the other person gives you all. God says, I have given it all to you because you are so precious to me. You'll never have any more. You'll never have any less. You have everything that you need in me. Let's keep going. God says, he says, my spirit resides. God's spirit resides in me. His guarantee to me that I am his own and that I will receive all he has promised me. Yeah. Yeah. God says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you, right? He says, thank God there's, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He says, there's no power, no principalities, no fear or doubt, nothing in the, in the past or the future that can ever separate us from the love of God. And he said, and I put my spirit in you. Do you know what that spirit is? That is part of the Godhead. That is part of of God who's existed from eternity past resides in us as a guarantee that all these things he's promised that he will fulfill that all the things he's given us will never be taken away and that and that we can know at every day that we belong let's keep going he says I now have peace with God. Remember, I was at war with him because I was on the other side of the chasm with Satan. And I, God has reconciled me with him in his relationship full of peace. But not just peace between me and him. He says, we can now have peace between each other, which we could not do in the past. Okay? Isn't that amazing? God says, you know, w people have looked for thousands of years for some institution that's going to allow them to live in harmony with each other. And, and guess what God says? There's only one that exists. And he says, that is my family. That's the only place you can have, actually have harmony and peace with each other. Now, we don't experience it all the time because we walk away from it. But God says, yes, now I have reconciled you with each other. Let's keep going. And he says, I now have a purpose and a calling to do good works that will help others grow in Christ. Though you're younger, you're probably not even worried about any good works, right? That's not a problem. <laughs> if you're in elementary or maybe middle school, high school, those of you in college, you're really struggling trying to figure out, well, what am I supposed to be and where am I going, right? Some of us a little bit older, you may say, well, maybe I've missed it. Maybe I missed what I was supposed to be doing. Maybe there's something bigger I should have been doing. And the amazing thing is, all of us today who know Christ have the opportunity today to walk with him in his good works. <laughs> you can't change anything in the past, right? But today, God gives me the full opportunity to walk with him in his good works. He says, I have a purpose for you today. And, and just like in the parable of talents, he says, and as we participate in those good works, he says, I will give you more tomorrow. Isn't that amazing? The, the stuff that you have, I'm going to give you more of that if you're part of my family. And you know what? You, you may lose your job, Relationships may crash, financial things may go down the tubes, the nation may be in the throes of whatever, right? And God says, that's okay, my good works exist today. None of that has been disturbed. Nothing will change the plans and the purpose that God has. And the amazing thing is he lets us participate in it every single day. And you know what, he takes joy in us doing that as well too. Of walking alongside of him. You, you know, when my, when my boys were in high school, they would start driving. And 
Funny thing, every now and then, they, and my daughter as well, they, they show up at home and there'd be a flat tire. How did that happen? How, how could there be a flat tire in the car? Once I was out there changing it and I looked underneath, there was a lot of corn stalks underneath the car too. And I, there was a flat tire and there were a lot of corn stalks. And I, I had to ask, Kate, hey, Kate, how, how did all these corn stalks get underneath the, uh, the car? And, uh, but, you know, one of, in the midst of all those uh, wondering things that were going on, uh, sometimes cars would come home, they wouldn't have mirrors on the left and the right, you know, and things like that too. Those, those things happen. But, I, I, you know, I, and I'm cheap. I never paid more than a couple thousand bucks for a car, and I work on all my own cars. I hate to spend anything else. So I'm always out there working on cars because I'm cheap. Is that true, Kim? Yes. <laughs> I always figure something better to do with money and put it in a car. But a lot of times I grab my boys and say, why don't you come out and help me? Now, do my, my, my oldest son, Dan, is just mechanically inept. He just, I mean, he's very strong, and he's mechanically inept. That means when he's turning the wrench the wrong way, he will break something <laughs> because he will, he will keep turning it until something breaks. The wrench breaks, the nut breaks, something will break, but he, he doesn't stop. But my younger son, Andy, is a little more mechanically inclined. But I would ask the boys, come on out. Now, did I need them to help me change the tire or the mirror or whatever? No, I didn't need them because I already knew how to do it. But I like spending time with them. I like, I like hanging out with them. And that's, God doesn't need us to do any of his purposes. Nobody, he, he's not relying on anybody in this room. But he loves us. And he says, come alongside. And, you know, just like sometimes my kids would mess things up while we're working on it, we mess it up too. You know, and you know what? If God really wants to get things done really quick and efficiently, he'd leave us out of it. Right? But he, it's okay. He says, I want you to be there with me because I love you and I want you to walk with me in this. This is a gift that God has given us that nobody can take away from you. And nothing can stand in the way of his purposes and nothing can stand in the way of him encouraging you to come and walk with him and his purposes. Nothing. This is the ruler of the universe. This is his invitation that nobody gets to decline for you. The only person that gets to decline, I guess, is who? It's you. You're the only one. That's the only thing that stands in the way of that. It's always, but it, the amazing thing is I decline, and I have this last week, as I decline, God says, that's okay, I'm going to give you another opportunity, and another invitation, and another invitation, and another invitation. Every day is a new set of invitations. Let's keep going. He says, I can boldly and confidently come into God's presence. Why is that? Well, maybe I've really screwed up this week. And maybe I screwed up last week. And maybe I screwed up the week before. And the week before. And the week before. And the month before. And the year before. And God says, if you've humbled yourself to accept the fact that you're not going to make it on your own and that you desperately need to be reconciled with me and if you've accepted the blood of his son, right? He says, guess what? All, remember all these things we just talked about? He says, I've declared you holy. I've forgiven your sins. I've pulled you out of the kingdom of Satan. I've placed you in my household. I've given you my spirit. I've given you all the spiritual blessings you're ever going to have, right? I've equipped you for good works. And God says, I'm with you. There's nothing that stands between us. And at any time, at any day, you get to boldly go into talk and be in the presence of the creator of the universe. Isn't that an amazing thing? My kids, Dad, I'm calling you. You never pick up the phone. That's right. My wife tells me that sometimes too, right? Then there's times I'm available and there's times I'm just not. That's just how it goes. Usually my phone dies about halfway through the day and it, it's kind of nice. <laughs> there's, there's sort of this peaceful afternoon with the dead cell phone, right? <laughs> there's, nobody's calling. Isn't that kind of nice? And there's almost like, oh, do I really have to plug this thing back in? Because I know what's going to happen when I do. It's going to all the all the missed phone calls, right? You're laughing at me because you know that's true. That's right. Yeah. But you know what? God never, God, he's not like that. There's total joy and total access at all times because we are his children. Yeah. In the midst of this goofy 
game yesterday, I was sitting over with my son and daughter-in-law, and, and you know what? For most of the game, I got to hold my, my newest granddaughter, Charlotte. We call her Charlie. And she was just sitting there sleeping. And I said, you know what? Who cares about whatever else is going on? I, I'm going to hang out with Charlie. You know? There's nothing better than that, right? And that's how God, in the midst of everything that's going on in all creation, he says, I get to hang out with you. And he says, there's nothing better than that in all of creation. And that's why we get to boldly come in his presence, because that's his desire for us. That's not all. Let's keep going. Those are the things that God gave us, all of those things, the instant we came to Christ. We'll never have any more or any less of any of those things. But because of who we are now, this is the second part of Ephesians, these are the things we actually get to do that we couldn't do in the past because we didn't have that relationship with God. We were in Satan's kingdom. We weren't in God's kingdom. We hadn't been forgiven. We didn't know what grace was like. We never experienced unconditional love, so we couldn't give it to anybody else, right? We didn't have any hope. We were just following what was going on with everybody else, all the rest of the fools. We were just hanging out with the fools. And walking down the foolish path. And God says, you don't have to do that anymore because now you're part of my family. He says, now, because you're part of my family, you can be humble before other people. You can be gentle and patient and kind and compassionate and forgiving with others. Because you couldn't do that in the past. These are things, because these are all qualities of God. Remember, we were in whose kingdom before? Who was it? Satan. These are not, these are not, Satan is not humble and gentle and patient and kind and compassionate and forgiving, right? He's everything but that. But now that we're part of God's kingdom, we can reflect the, the God whose child we are now for the first time. Now, are we these things all the time? No. No. But we can be because we now have the power to do that through Christ. Let's keep going. <laughs> Once again, it's in white. What can I say? I gotta love PowerPoint. All right. What does this say? It says, I, this is Ephesians 5, 1 through 17. It says, I don't have to be a fool anymore. But I can live a life of wisdom. And a lot of you and me did a lot of foolish things that hurt us and a lot of other people before we knew who Christ was. And he says, you don't have to do that, things that will harm you over and over again and harming other people in your family and your relationships. He says, you don't have to be that anymore. He says, now you can choose wisdom. And what is wisdom? It's, it's knowing the will of God and knowing what is true and putting that into practice in your life. Now, sometimes you may have known some truth, but you, you didn't have the power to put it into practice in your life. You, you knew what was going to be healthy, but you didn't do it because you didn't have the strength to do it. And God says, now you have through Christ, the ability to choose to live a wise life and to not be a fool anymore. Because let me tell you, everybody who's part of Satan's kingdom is a fool. And you don't have any choice. That's all you can be, right? But God says, now you're family and you don't have to be foolish. Let's keep going. But I can honor God and my spouse through marriage. My marriage can now be a reflection of God's love for me. And maybe I can even step up and be married so I can demonstrate the fact that there is a commitment because God is committed to me, so I need to be making that commitment to somebody else who I'm living with. And then once I make that commitment, 
I can make that commitment be a joy for the other person and not a burden. Because my relationship with God is a joy, so I can make that a joy for them as well too. Let's keep going. He says, I can honor God and my children and my parents through my family. Right? Kids, you, you can choose, if you know who God is, you can choose to be a joy to your mom and dad. Isn't that, wasn't that the goal when you got up this morning? Yes, God, it's Sunday. Let's be a joy to mom and dad. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe, <laughs> or maybe you got up and said, oh, what do we have to do before I get to do what I get to do, right? Well, you have a choice now. Maybe you can be a joy to your brothers and sisters. Wow. You know the ones that are just annoying to you all the time? And I was sitting there with Genevieve, my granddaughter. I said, and she, she, was, she was just all, her face was all screwed up. And I said, Genevieve, what's up? She goes, oh, I'm so annoyed with Wyatt. I am so annoyed with Lorelai. And I'm so annoyed with Sully. And she looked at me and says, Grandpa, do they really have to stay here? <laughs> And I had to say, Genevieve, thank you for being honest. <laughs> I said, you want an honest answer? Yes! <laughs> but there's times you have to say, it, it's good. Kids are really honest. The rest of us are thinking it a lot of times with the rest of our family. We just don't say it. Okay? But kids are honest and they'll let you know. Well, yeah, you know what? And I had to tell Genevieve, you know what? You, you can either choose to be just really annoyed or you can choose to have some joy. Right? You can choose to be a person who offers joy to your brothers and sisters. And you know what, parents? We can choose to offer joy to our kids. Or we can offer hardship to our kids, right? That's our choice too. And God says, now that you're part of my family, you can offer joy to your kids because you've experienced joy from me. You can offer love to your kids because you've gotten love from me. But you know what? If you don't know who God is, you cannot do that. All you can offer is, I'll love you until. And you cross that line and then it's done. Okay? I'll put up with you as long as, right? Because once you've crossed that barrier, I ain't putting up with you anymore. And you know what God says? I will never leave you for, or forsake you. You can always boldly come into my presence. I always see you as holy and forgiven. I always take great joy in you. That's what we can offer with our kids if we know who he is. Let's keep going. I can honor God and my employer and my employees through my work. Wow. This same joy that we have in that relationship between us and God is the same ones that we can offer on Monday when we show up at work with the people we're working with. And let me tell you, this was, this was the hardest thing for me to learn because I, I, was, I lived in a world of fighter pilots for 34 years and th their focus was not joy, okay? Th their, their focus was the mission of whatever we were doing and anybody who's in the, getting in the way of that needs to get off the ship, okay? Because we're, we're going to get the job done. And... God says, as his representatives, though, you, we get to enter into every one of those opportunities and provide joy. And maybe you're, you're the employee with a really hard employer. You can choose to be a joy for that hard employer. Maybe you're the employer with that really hard employee. And you can choose to be a joy to that employee. Maybe you're somebody in the congregation that's kind of upset with us as pastors. Well, you can choose to be a joy to us. And you know what? Maybe you're somebody in the congregation that's really hard to deal with, and we can choose to be a joy to you as your pastors as well, too. In all those relationships, God says we can honor God. Here's the last one. Greg's going to go over this next week. So this is like Looking into the future next Sunday, right? This is, it's fair? We're going to do this next Sunday? It's closing out Ephesians. He says, I can be strong and stand firm in the day of evil. 
And you know what? What's that? Ron's going, what's that a picture of? That's a knight there with the dragon, with the flames coming out of his mouth. Sorry, that's just Will picture in a picture. But you know what? Satan is looking to consume us because he hates God. He hates the fact that God is honored over him. He believes he should be the one receiving all praise and honor and glory. And he hates us because we're not part of his kingdom anymore. And we're giving honor to God and we're reflecting God. And we're not giving honor to him and we're not reflecting him in our lives. And he will do everything he can think of and conceive of. And let me tell you, this is a created being that exists way beyond us and with powers and understanding and knowledge and dominion way beyond any of us. And if it was just us, we'd be crushed and hung out to dry in an instant. Thanks be to God <laughs> that he gives us a position that not only does God stand against Satan, because we're part of his family, we can stand against Satan. That's our inheritance. He says he's given us everything we need to not only stand but be victorious over Satan. And when Satan comes to attack us, we can go to him and we say, you are a liar. You have been a liar from the beginning of time. You have no possession in me and you need to leave. And at the same instant, we can go to our Savior and say, I am weak. I have no strength in myself. But in Christ, I can do all things. Because you strengthen me. God, I'm desperate for your strength. Give me that last slide, Steve. These are all your things. Maybe you weren't thinking about all these things when you walked in here this morning. Maybe there were a hundred other things that were consuming you. And here, in just a little bit of time, Greg, come on up. We're going to have communion together. And as we do that, as we hold that bread and that grape juice there, as we have that, I hope you just think about some of these things and be in awe of a God who would give you all of this. And this is just from one small book of the Bible, right? This is just six pages. <laughs> And you know what? There are more and more and more riches that you have way beyond this. And I would encourage you to thank God as you're taking communion. Thank God for these things. He says, when anxiety was great with me, because this, this is what the psalmist said, because he said anxiety was great with me. He's being honest. He says, your consolation brought me joy. And I just pray for all of us here that this morning can be a time of joy in the midst of all the rest of the chaos as we think of all the things that God has done for us and has planned for us in the future as well. Thanks, Greg.